It's the moment you've been waiting for. It's the moment we've been waiting for. We've got five of the very best superbikes on hand because this is the 2020 Mega Test. Indeed, so we're in the Algarve. We've got two days on the road around some amazing roads and we've got three days at this amazing track. Let's get it on. Let's smash it. Wore my slider out. We're proud to have Bridgestone sponsor the 2020 Mega Test and fit the S22, the best all round super sports tyre on the market, to all five of the bikes to ensure fairness and equality. So, 2020 Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory. Not much new for 2020, is there? No, but it's got a nicer paint scheme. It's a much nicer paint scheme. Does the, does the shape some uh, justice, really, doesn't it? Yeah, the last one was just a bit boring. I mean, I'd still like to see a bit more colour on it. Yeah, like the GP replica job. Yeah, the yeah. X one. Yeah, X. Uh, now, the big news is, I say it was big news, but the only real news is the addition of the Olin's Smart EC2 suspension. So we kind of know what we're getting. It's going to be a good base, isn't it? Excellent yeah. chassis, sweet motor. It's going to be right up there, isn't it? Right up there. Um, right up there. Right up there. Hot tipped, possibly a favourite. And here we have the 2020 BMW S1000 RRM package. Now, the M package, we've got a grippy seat, lithium battery, and carbon, carbon wheels. wheels. Only bike here with carbon wheels. Yep. Uh, this bike won our Superbike test last year. Yep. It's a firm favourite, that's for sure. Firm favourite, big things. The electronics, it's so hot, it's 40 degrees, and tyre temps are going to be soaring and difficult to control, so the electronics is key here. Definitely a firm favourite, although it's unchanged completely for 2020, but again, what a package, what an mmm package. What an mmm package. So the 2020 Ducati Panigale V4S. This is an intriguing one. This really is an intriguing one for me because you rode it at the launch. Uh, we rode it not so long ago in the UK and it, it surprised me. There's lots to like about it. And it's one of those bikes that you look at it and go, well, it's got some wings and that's about it. But there are so many changes for 2020. Um, very sort of subtle ones, but I think they'll add up to uh, making it far easier to ride on track and on the road. Absolutely. Um, I'm really looking forward to being able to test it at a track I sort of know. Yeah. Because, uh, where were we? Bahrain. Bahrain. No one's ever been there. No. Impossible to tell, really, the differences. But, yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot easier to ride. Which is good in 40 degree heat. You want a buddy. Yeah. And this could be the buddy. Mm. So here we have the brand new Honda CBR1000RR-R. SP? SP. And various other digits afterwards. But this is a brand new bike for this year. You were out in Qatar on it. Yep. Uh, I'm super excited to ride it hard, properly. I mean, Qatar is a very different circuit to Portimouth. Qatar is a flat circuit, featureless, very fast, but it's very different to Portimao with lots of crests and stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be a very different test, but. I love the way, I love the way it looks. It does it look, look It looks quality. I yeah. like the can on it. The fixings. This the, is top, the top yoke looks yeah, all yeah. very yeah. RCV. And for the first time in years, this looks like a premium bike. Absolutely. But it's got a premium price tag. And it does have keyless ignition. But this is the only brand new bike for 2020. Yeah. And here we have the 2020 Yamaha YZF R1. Again, subtle changes for 2020. You did the launch in... Jerez. Jerez, so yeah. Yeah. Bit more suffocation. Yeah. Uh, engine output is the same as it always was, but there's four cats in here yeah. to get Meow. through Euro 5. Uh, so, but it's always been a great bike. The electronics, this was a game changer when it came out. Maybe it's a little bit tired, but you know, I still think it's a great platform. So let's see what it, it gets up to. And it's got delicious carbon fiber everywhere. And it sounds bloody nice. Look, look kind of sexy. You want my end shot? Yeah. yeah. You could win a bike 
just like this one, with the weekly lifestyle competition from BOTB for just pennies. Save them up and buy some new flip-flops because I've had these since 1996. A massive thank you to BOTB.com who stepped in at the last minute to save the mega test from our dear friend Corona. So go and check out the BOTB weekly lifestyle competition where there are 100 motorcycles to be won. Tickets range from just 15p to £1. Competition closes midnight on Sunday with a guaranteed weekly winner, which could be you! These are the best superbikes of 2020. Simple. We could have brought the GSX R1000 and the ZX10R along to the Algarve to make up the numbers, but that's exactly what they would have done. Made up the numbers. Finishing in 6th and 7th respectively. With two days set aside for road-based assessment before heading to the track, hundreds of miles of mountainous tarmac were covered in search of the 2020 Mega Test. King of the Road. It's light. God, moving it around, it's well light. Right, Japanese time. Konnichiwa. Good luck, mate, because those pegs are high. It's so light between one's legs. F oh my gee, what the hell is that? Right, right. So you need to get the keys in there. So you need to press the, keys, the button. The keys in my thing. Yeah. So the key, they press the button on the left-hand side of the dash. That. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Ah, oh, bye-bye, Paul. I'll be in you later. I right, try not to drop it in the pool. It's got to be. Was it 30, 34 degrees? It's um, staggeringly hot and I'm in a big black suit. Oh, my balls. Clean your car, mate, for fuck's sake. Well, that's the first fuel stop. Um, oh, oh, that's it, really. <laughs> Great. Oh, yeah. Gaining on him, you know. Right, that's worn my slider out. Well, it's another beautiful day in the Algarve. Uh, that one. Morning, buddy. Hey. How'd you sleep all right? Bon dia. Yeah. Yeah, like a baby. So this is an Italian fest now. <laughs> oh yes. How do we get to the menu? Oh, that's not that. Well, it's another scorcher. And I'm on a scorcher. I'm saddling a scorcher. <laughs> <laughs> now that is a problem. We've got a hydraulic clutch. And that isn't, that's cable. I've got a hydraulic. Oh, what a twat. You know, it is only a problem when you're doing race starts. I mean, 90% of the time, yes, it is a bit grabby. For those of you who are used to kind of cable clutches and easy Japanese bikes, this might take some getting used to. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, wasn't expecting that, Nige. Cheers, Nige. Look like we're on the worst road. <laughs> And it's so fucking bumpy. Oh, I'm on the probably the two worst bikes to be doing this on. As you can probably hear my voice. Oh, open this visor. Try and let some of the blisteringly hot Portuguese air into my my eyeballs. And I'm quite looking forward to a little stint on the double R now because I'm interested to see back to back if it's still the champ. Uh, what are we saying on the dash? 36 degrees. Whew. So hot. So hot right now. Mega Test 2020. 
mega breast. <laughs> just one, just one mega breast, one massive tit, one massive veiny, pale, lactating tit. Dino numbers don't necessarily equate to real life numbers, but they're essential for pub ammo and bragging rights. We took all five bikes down to GHS Racing for some power runs. The red line is the Fireblade, the blue line is the R1M, the green line is the Aprilia, the orange line is the BMW, and for some reason we couldn't export the Ducati Graph, so apologies. It made 189 horsepower, FYI. Now a few nuggets to point out here. The BMW with its non-cheaty genuine 1000cc engine makes the most peak power but also dominates throughout the rev range thanks to its shift cam technology. The stragglers, not surprisingly, were the two genuine 1000cc bikes bereft of variable valve timing wizardry. The Honda's peak power at 190 brake horsepower is noteworthy as is its high rev and techers, but the gaping chasm below 9000 rpm is all too evident and the Yamaha's cross-plane crankshaftery and Euro 5 guys is scant redemption, around 15 horsepower less than the BMW. Cheers, buddy. Sponsored by Superbock. This is strong stuff. I got absolutely gazeboed last On night. On two bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Proper binge drinking. What a couple of days though, mate. I mean, <sighs> in every sense. I mean, it's so hot. It's been 30, what, 8, 39? 39 on the van. Yeah. But I reckon, I reckon it nudged 40 today. Yeah. It was... In, on in terms of, you know, we've got the best five sports bikes in existence and... And have it been ever made? Yeah, 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 simple you know, as that, yeah. yeah. So I think the only way f of the fair way of doing this is running through them alphabetically. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I yeah? do, yeah. It excites me. Oh, it's, it's got a lovely growl, this bike. And again, this, this bike comes stock with the Akropovich can. It's not full system, obviously. This is, this is nice enough. You wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily have to rush straight out and buy a loud exhaust. Oh, it's just something about this bike. It's so old, really. You know, the chassis is so old now. But every year, they just keep tweaking it. Oh gosh, I like it. Big feet, I've got big feet and I really want to, I think you can adjust this. The, um, it's like made for sort of size sevens. So I'm, I'm getting a bit kerfuffled with my feet on the shifter. So I've been on the bike for a good 45 minutes of horrible roads and sort of general fucking around. I'm not particularly fatigued. The, the suspension's definitely, even though it's electronic, you would have thought you could do like a quick, soft, super soft road mode. It's not really. I mean, it's, it's okay for stuff like this. It's still compliant, but it's still racy. There's no, there's no fluff. It's, it's, uh, it's all out race. It's got excitement. It's got ability, absolute ability. Would you choose this to go on your holidays? Pro uh, Probably not, but it's definitely right up there in terms of the performance. It's not as easy to ride on the road. It's more of a professional tool, I think. Yeah, as we continually say, this is world super bikes for the masses. But everything about this bike shouts racy. You've got adjustable everything. Adjustable swing arm pivot, adjustable engine mounts, adjustable headstock. You know, you could sit at a track day or your favourite Sunday road sesh and go nuts with the thing. And the sound! Oh man. I don't think there's a better sound. And apart from these sexy colours, the only change is this fancy suspension. And it's interesting because the chassis is so... I was interested to see how this suspension reacts to it. It's the raciest chassis out of them. But it doesn't make a difference, it's still as sexy as ever. You know, some bikes age like 
Daniela Westbrook but you're pretty as aged like a sexy MILF or something you know it's dated yes the design's 13 years old but who cares who cares when it sounds this good we know what we're getting with the Aprilia it is it is a race bike, isn't it? It's a yeah. race bike for the road. Yeah, and it's largely the same as last year's bike. And largely the same as years before that. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the same bike. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not, though, is it's it? Not, no. it it's not, it's Because it's a very good example of how each year they keep chipping away yeah. at that sculpture yeah. and refining it and refining it and refining it and refining it. Soon there's going to be not much left to chip away anymore. No. So they're going to they're have to go to a 1200. They are going to have to update <laughs> it soon. However, it's still a phenomenal bike, isn't it? I mean, let's talk, obviously we're talking about the road here, the track comes later, but the road, I mean, that engine is super smooth. Yes, you know, the throttle now and again, if you're out in track mode or, you know, it can get a bit snatchy, but the engine itself is silken. Yeah, lovely noise, lovely oh, yes. tone, and you get an Akropovich can with it. Yeah. It's not just some rattly old piece of tinfoil. So what's your thoughts on the 2020 mod then? Because that is, you know, again, it's the same bike as last year, but with the um, Olin's EC2. Yeah. I mean, the chassis is so stiff that it kind of replicates that, doesn't it? You know, it is, it's yeah. a little bit stiffer than the other suspension. It's not as plush, but when the surface is right, it's almost unbeatable, isn't it? I think you, you, the last thing you said there, when the surface is right. Yeah. Because they, I was expecting to have a sort of soft boy mode where you could just go, do you know, I just want to get home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and, and even, but even on the softest of soft, mind you, we haven't, we haven't gone right into it. We'll do that no, on the track. No, no. But the generic soft mode was still very yeah. jarring and hard work sometimes. Yeah, I well, mean... Well, a lot of times. It is, it's a race bike. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Aprilia build race bikes. That's what they're yeah. known for. And they for. shouldn't apologise for that. No, exactly. You, if you're going to buy an Aprilia and go touring around Ireland, well, <laughs> you've lost it. <laughs> but it is, you know, it, it's fairly roomy, isn't it? It is fairly roomy. Yeah. And the pegs aren't as high as some of the other no, bikes no, no, on no, test. No. Um, it's, again, the smoothness of the engine helps you cover miles on it. Yeah. And it's actually quite livable, easy to move around. Yeah. The seat isn't that bad. The bars are quite nice and wide. So it's, I think the worst thing for biggies like myself is the, the sort of nut to yoke ratio. It's too close. Yeah. Like you need, it needs to be a bit further away because for, you know, I find it, uh, but for normal sized people like myself, yeah. it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Well, normal height. <laughs> I mean, the, in terms of electronics, they are definitely on the racier side and they won't save you. They simply won't save you from a high side. They're, they're not, not that sophisticated. No, they're not. They're still a bit behind the rest. Definitely. Definitely. In fact, probably electronics well, traction wise, I'd probably say it's almost one of the worst. On yes. Test. Yeah. I mean, it's still it's still OK. But like I said, you know, regardless of what you say, yeah. oh, ban electronics. Oh, I'll tell you what, my 1996 CBR 600 has no electronics. Shut up, mate. This, the thing is, they are not bad, but no matter what you do, electronics won't save you from a high side on that thing. Simple as that. It's not all bad. I still wouldn't run or ride it on a rainy Tuesday no. with like super no. horses on. No. And, yeah. So, B is for, no, not Yamaha, B is for BMW. Well, in my opinion, I do get harassed for being a BMW fanboy. You do, yeah. I don't know why, because I haven't had BMWs for a while. I've got GSs and stuff, but yeah. not... Anyway, the, the S1000 has been the king of the road for the last decade. Yeah, over a decade, yeah. And wow, you know, the new, the new one is just as good. It's, it, it, well, it's obviously much, much better, but in terms of road performance, it is next level. This, without doubt, is the easiest bike to ride of them all. That said, it's going to be very easy to uh, get rogered in the showers in jail with this thing because you just open the throttle before you know it, you're doing three figures and it's jailbait. It's as simple as that. Whereas the others, you know you're going that fast. You know you're on the seat of your pants. You know, in terms of a road bike, it's comfiest. It's got all the equipment you want. You've got heated grips. You've got the luxuries that the others don't, that the sort of so-called race your bikes have. And it's just effortless. 
You know, for me, it's the comfiest by a long way. And boy, does she hustle. You know, practicality-wise, it has a bloody fuel gauge. I mean, that's, that's a lovely touch on the road. That is a beautiful touch. In terms of practicality, it's the best in every sense. Comfort, everything. It even has the best steering circle. But it also has enough techers in the tank and more to play with the other boys. It just does it without the kind of woolly waving noise or power or heroics of the other bikes. It just does it in a very Germanic way. I mean, already it just feels so smooth. It turns so lovely. This bike is the only one that comes with carbon wheels as standard. This is on the M package. So actually, and this is actually the cheapest bike on test. Can you believe it or not? The, the BMW, the M pack BMW is the cheapest bike on test. That's, that's crazy. But it just, oh, it just feels so, so solid. So easy, so damped. The Marzocchi forks, you wouldn't really tell any difference between all the fancy Olin stuff. And everything happens in slow motion on this bike. It's, it's so relaxing, even at pace. <laughs> and it is exciting. <laughs> oh, God. And on these sort of dusty, unknown roads, the electronic suite is so good in this bike. So I have I have complete faith in this bike basically and I, I think you you may not notice you're going faster on this but I think you naturally ride this so much quicker because it's so easy it's so easy and the throttle is so nice and oh birds don't hit the throttle's so nice like mid corner I was doing some uh, pan shots earlier all the other bikes are a bit you know choppy this is I mean you, you can see that, it, that what I'm doing that with my hand now and the effect it's having on the bike it's, it doesn't have that uh, uh, uh. it's just deliciously smooth and very very fast you know, if we're talking about a road bike what is the best out of all of these five bikes on the road then it's got to be this hands down I mean, it can't be anything else. It's, oh, the speed at which it changes direction. And that's where we're going tomorrow. There's the old trackalaka. Ottodomo. So buttery. Buttery biscuit base. I think you just jump on it and feel at home straight away. It yeah. doesn't have any niggles or idiosyncrasies or foibles of the other bikes. No. You just get on it. It doesn't sound silly. It doesn't pull any weird shapes. It doesn't, you know, it's not granny disco in. It just does it. It's cheating. It is cheating. And the best thing about it is, or one of the best things about it is, you know, we've done some roll-ons today. And, you know, even with a stock, genuine 1,000cc engine, it, it smashed the Panigale. It smashed the Panigale. Yeah. I like mean, smashed it. Smashed it. And it's just so compliant, easy to get on with. You know, if you were going to do a tour on any of these bikes, we're stupid enough to go touring on a superbike, that's the one. Yes, I definitely. Mean, you know, again, BMW, you get the screen is the nicest out of the bunch by yep. a long way. Agreed. Uh, you get like heated grips, you get a really nice little dial modey thing. You get all the toys for a touring bike on a super. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's I mean, and, and the, the shifter, the gear shit, the, the blippers and stuff. Yes, it's not as quick and sharp as some of the no. other bikes, but it's beautiful to use on the road at all rev ranges. I was going to say, it works at every single point. And, and it? it's just a really nice yeah. bike. The, the Mars Oki Fox is the only bike here without Olin suspension on it. And that's one thing we both talked about previously. Before the test happened, we were thinking, oh, you know, is it going to affect, you know, that's the only bike now without Olin's. Is it going to be affected by that? The answer is a categorical no. It's simple as that. No. You yeah. cannot tell that bike hasn't got Olin's on it. And you know, we've been running some rough roads today. Yeah. Every type of terrain, including off-road for <laughs> the first yeah. bit. And you wouldn't notice it. You know, fair play. I, th I think BMW could, there's a lot of manufacturers who go, right, like Aprilia, for instance, have gone, right, we need to whack some Olins on to, ca to, to mm. catch up with the rest of them. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. If anything, they're going away from that sort of 
because they've taken Brembo's off. There was yeah. Brembo's on the yeah, last-gen yeah, yeah. bike. So they sort of almost want to go their own route, which is admirable. Yeah. And, and again, the braking is fantastic on that bike. It's a little bit... It's a little bit wooden. I, I, you know, if we're talking, if we're being really pedantic, I don't think the brakes are as good as some of the other bikes. But, mm. I mean, you know, you have to be riding like an absolute Jeremy Hunt to, to realise yeah. that. Lap after lap after exactly. lap of your local supermarket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And on, again, on the road, braking performance, you, you're more likely to have a colder tyre, so the ABS is going to kick in on anything before you notice any difference yeah. in the braking. So yeah. they work. They work really well. Uh, and here's the, here's the absolute clincher. It's the cheapest bike on test. Oh, I thought you were going to say, oh, it's got a fuel gauge. But oh, yeah, and I, it's got a fuel gauge. <laughs> but yeah, it's the cheapest bike on test. Yeah. It's the cheapest yeah. one. Yes, it might not look the nicest, and some of the, the plastics are a little bit, bit cheaper. Yeah, but it's got carbon wheels as well, and I think that plays a lot in its hands with, this, with yes. the handling. I, I think undoubtedly the chassis is spot on anyway. Oh, it's it, really magic You magic cannot stuff. fault it. You cannot fault it. Like I said, it doesn't... It doesn't throw any shapes, it doesn't get out of line, it's really stable, but it just gets on with the job. Yeah. And mile for, after mile. For the road, that's what you want. Yeah. Yes, it may not be the most exciting, but you can ride it like more of a twat. I will say though, I mean, while other bikes, you know you're going 100 million mm. miles an hour, it, it feels like it, you know, it makes the sounds, it throws the shapes, but with the BMW, it's so easy to go 150 miles an hour without even thinking about it. And that is, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Personally, I, I can't. You can't discredit it for that because it's so capable. Yeah, that's what it's doing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it makes you feel so safe, and so. That's it. It feels makes you feel safe. I mean, we're talking about electronics with the Aprilia. This yeah. is totally the opposite end of the spectrum, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. It's it, probably one of the best on test. I think. Would you go as far as to say it feels uncrashable? <sighs> well. I got my elbow down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on a Nagery yeah. shitty little road yeah. and the others I didn't get anywhere yeah, near yeah, yeah. it or even think about it. And that is a gauge. That's a barometer of... of on Bridgestone S22s. Yeah. It gives you that much confidence and yeah, don't go out and try it, but it's uncrashable. <laughs> so what's next? D, no it's not for Honda, it's Ducati, the Panigale V4S. I mean... You, you were surprised when I, I was, came back from Bahrain and said, mate. Yeah, I was, yeah. That's pretty good now. Yeah. And you were like, shut up. I think I'd safe, it's safe to say this is probably the biggest shock. Mm. I mean, what they've done with the electronics and the, uh, the rear alignment with the uh, drivetrain and the swing arm, those two combinations have made it a far better road bike. This is very much smoother, but it's still edgy, it's still aggressive. It's still a rampant Bolognian bullet. But like I said, it's smoother, it's easier. And uh, I'm looking forward to a proper thrashing. I mean, the whole, oh, the, just the shifter and the blipper and the whole execution is smoother. I mean, that's seamless. Oh my word, this is like Jorge Lorenzo covered in Mantequilla. It's just... Oh. I don't think I truly appreciated it last time. You know, for 2020, the Panigale tracks the road better. The geometry changes, are just, it just sinks into the tarmac rather than skittering over it and becoming nervous. This really is a, a massive leap. And again, it's not something I felt necessarily in the UK because you don't ride it as hard. And now the temperature's getting up to 30 degrees and um, my nuts are resembling those ball in a bag potatoes you get. That's just an inherent Ducati thing, I suppose. But it's only when you, you know, when, when the temperature's 30 plus, that's when you get to notice it. I don't think it's an issue in the England that often. Oh, oh. I was about to comment on how plush the Ducati suspension is, but I don't think my balls agree. I think that's a buzzword, it's plush. You know, people look at it and go, well, it's got wings, that's about it. But there's so much more that's gone into this bike for this year. And although it's subtle, I think this is the bike that's received kind of the least changes, but they all add up to making it absolutely incredible. As Chris mentioned a minute ago, uh, when we were stopped for a chat, the Ducati is the only bike that comes with its own smell. It's factory fresh from the factory, and regardless of how old the bike is, well, within reason, 
They all smell the same. It's like eau de Bologna. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, instantly it's actually way comfier. Not way comfier, but it, it is softer and smoother than the Apriliata. Sounds like a nice pasta. Oh, well, it just makes you feel like an absolute legend, this. And now it really does have some performance to back it up. And that is a spectacular corner. Oh, yes. It's just gone from being such an untamable beast to a really nice balance of easier to ride, still very exciting, beautiful. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a proper... This is what... It, uh, this is what it should have been from the day one, but you know, Ducati tend to release the first version and then work on it. And now this is very good. The braking's so stable and nice. And the way it just turns in now, it's, it's so much more predictable than how it used to be. Oh yes, oh yes. I can't get over how nice this Panigale is to ride on the road. It used to be just for posing. All right, love. Now, uh, it's for proposing. I mean, I knew it would be after the launch in Bahrain. I knew it would be a nicer bike for the road, but I just didn't think it'd be quite this nice. So this anti-wheelie thing, even though I've changed it right down to off, anti-wheelie off, you can still crack the throttle open as hard as you can in second and it really struggles to wheelie. And that's down to two things. Mainly, I believe, I think it's gonna be about the mapping. This 2020 bike, the torque's been reduced in gears one, two, and three, or basically played with, so it's managed how that power gets delivered to the rear wheel. And also the chain pitch stuff. So if you've seen the V4, the, the review of this bike, we were talking a lot about how they've change the angle of the chain pitch so it's less likely to to pull it up and pull the wheelie up it's more squats down uh, I think this is a dark horse for not only but <laughs> could I mean could it be the, the winner of the road ride I don't know um, but it's certainly a, a contender and I think round Portimao circuit this is going to be very surprising I think it's going to be a lot easier than than people think don't forget to check out BOTB for the weekly lifestyle competition where you can win a Ducati just like this for pence. Go on, go on. I'd say it's probably one of the biggest changes, one of the biggest updates and success stories of 2020. Agreed, yeah. In terms of making it a, a compliant, friendlier yes. yeah, yeah, road yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah. Well, hang on, first of all, it's beautiful to look at. It's a special thing yeah. and you do feel like an absolute legend like when i was following you up i was on the bmw and some people were looking at us and they were all looking at you well i mean regardless of what bike i was on they're probably looking at me anyway yeah who's that <laughs> who's that guy i wasn't i wouldn't say guy but anyway <laughs> uh, so coupled with its newfound ability yeah it is definitely the sexiest most desirable yeah. thing you want to be seen on and now you can ride it properly and not crash it at the first corner. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's exciting. But it's exciting. It? It's exciting and safe. It's, it's functional and safe. You've got the best of both worlds now. And that is something that... Comfortable. Comfortable. I, yeah, mean, I, mean, it, I mean, it's 40 degrees today. Yeah. Everyone always talks about how hot the Ducati got. Yes, it was hot. It was hot. But I, will, I, but, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but my balls were boiling at 11 o'clock this morning. Yeah. And... I will say, uh, get, you know, it's an exhaust underneath your gusset. It's, it is, you know, you've got spuds boiling in a bag and it's as simple as that. And I don't, you know, but I will say, you have to, it has to be 40 degrees, 35, 40 degrees for you to feel it. Do I still think, because I came away from the test loving the bike and I, st and I think it's definitely make a, made a faster lap time around Bahrain and all that sort of stuff. But it just lacked, it, it, for me, it, it rounded the corners a little bit too much. It wasn't quite as sharp as it, as it was. No, but I mean. The, the animal wasn't there. And I still feel that a bit today. I turned wheelie control off to try and do some <laughs> hamming up for, for the something. And I don't clutch up wheelie, I just you know, yank the throttle. 
uh, like a Neanderthal. And it, it literally, second gear, how much, what's that claimed? 210 brake horsepower. 207 or something like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bang! Uh, yeah. Uh, but that's, and, and it's, that's not a bad thing. It's that's not, not a, a bad, bad thing. thing. But look, it's a better bike overall for the changes they made. That is not. It's a better road bike overall yeah. for the changes they made. Yeah. Yes, I agree with that. And it's still exciting. So, therefore, it's but a better bike. But it's not bike. as exciting. No, but I prefer it. I enjoy it more because yep. you can ride it harder. And, and ride I agree. It. Yeah. I, I agree. I'm yeah. just making a point that. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. I get that, it. That limiting factor, and we felt it on the road when we did the roll on with yeah. the double R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it has to be that different mapping. Yes, it is. Simple as that. that it shouldn't, it shouldn't possibly be true that that double R would out drag it in second gear. You know, gearing, everything else, and of course that, that has got a very, very good, the BMW has got a very good, very good variable valve timing. So, you know, it, yeah. it, it, there's a lot of variables in there, but I will say, yes, it's, it's, a, it's got another 100cc, so it should be a bit talkier. should absolutely smash it. But, but then you, you were leaving on the, the exit slip road, just gave it a bit of gas to just sort of get past the car to go, Left a massive 300 yard dark line from the back of that Panigale. I mean, it had a lot of weight on it, <laughs> smearing it into the tra into the, the asphalt. But, you know, again, surprise, fantastic bike, and it's right up there for me. And it's still got that urgency. You know, wherever you are in the rev range, it's still got urgency. And that's what, you know, it's, it's still exciting. It's still got a bit of, I don't know, it's, there's a bit of hidden something in there now because you can't quite make it out because it's not as stable, mm. it's not quite as edgy. But it's still got that soupçon, the little nugget of Bolognian buggery. <laughs> huh. Ho Honda. 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 Can I start with this one? Yeah, you crack on, mate. Yeah. Because, so I hadn't even seen this bike till it came out down this little step into the pool area. And I wasn't blown away by its looks from the press shots and stuff. I was like, yeah, mm, super expensive. It's gonna be a boring old Honda again. Having spent some time with it, it's not boring. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a Honda. It's not a Honda. It's unlike anything Honda have ever made and it's brilliant, it's brilliant. It is refreshing yeah. to see that bike come out of Japan. Yeah. Uh, it's got all the kit you could want. It's got the Olins, it's got the Brembos, it's got the, the sexy stuff, but it is, uh, and, and that comes with a Akropovich Pupa as well. And it is Which? the loudest, oh. nicest noise. It's so, I can't believe they got it through noise testing. That is one way to make an inline four sound exciting. Yeah. yeah. Growly, gravelly, grunty, grufter. Wow. How is this legal? It's loud, it's aggressive. It's belligerent. And it's unlike anything Honda have made before. It's brilliant. That front end is just delicious. Goads you on. I mean the downsides. Look, it needs revving. It's peaky. It's a proper race bike and I love it. But some people might not like it on the road. It needs revving past seven grand really at least. Six grand it just goes whoop. I mean, all you need is first gear, really. We do 110 mile an hour indicated in first gear. And the good news is, or even better news is, the pegs aren't as high as I remembered. I mean, it's, they're bearable, they're bearable. Unless Honda have magically done something since the launch and lowered the old girls. It's not a Tora by any means, but it's not as bad as I thought. But just the whole balance of the bike is just delicious. Uh, this is how babies are made. Welcome back, Honda. Welcome back. Ooh. This is definitely, she's definitely got some confidence in the front. It feels really quite nice. Indica I've switched gear, I'm finding it a little bit awkward from a road perspective. <laughs> it definitely, it's definitely egging me on. Like it can feel really, really flat, and then all of a sudden, it absolutely goes monstrous. It does feel quite exciting. This, it does feel new, especially jumping off the R1. It feels, <sighs> it, 
it just feels exciting. I like it. I just don't understand the character of the engine. It's just, it's like if you want it to be a docile baby, then it will be below 6,000 RPM. There's, there's really nothing there. And then it hits seven, eight grand and just goes absolutely batshit. The brakes are nice. The suspension's lovely. The noise is delicious. <laughs> It feels that's nice and wide for my big broad shoulders. It's not massively uncomfortable. I mean it is titchy. Like the pegs are super high, but actually there's quite a lot of reach in the arms. And it's just exciting. Like how long has it been since we've had an exciting Honda? As soon as that valve closes, it's like silence and nothing. That's full in on one. You've got to be just screaming the tits off it or you get out dragged by way less powerful bikes. So you've got to know where you're going. You've got to ride it like an absolute hero. Brakes are fucking good. Although the ABS is kicking in a bit there. Anyway. So look, let's get one thing straight. This is not designed to be a cruisy tourer fat sports bike you know that just you can do a track day on honda have absolutely aimed this at the racing market yes you can tour on it it's actually it's not that uncomfortable on on long journeys the pegs are bloody high but it's actually it's all right it's not it's not it's not it's not awful it's not the most friendly road bike it's great if you can if you've got the balls and the license to keep it above eight grand constantly but you know it, it, it suffers below that but does it suffer because it suffers because it doesn't have the torque like that r1 grunts this out of corners easily easily at low rpm but then as a road bike which is what this test is it's quite nice to have that soft pliable easy to live with power below batshit crazy speed so hmm i don't know we'll have to uh debate some more there's so much electronic fueling stuff mapping going on in this you can just feel that there's so much happening and there's a really interesting thing i'll try and show you in a minute where if you're riding at low speed you know when a sort of r1 or another superbike starts starts chugging uh, and you feel like you want to pull the clutch in. So this, it comes down, so I'll, I'll go beyond the chuggy speed here. So it's decelerating, and then it just picks up the throttle, and it just drives. So without any chug at 11 miles an hour. Whether that's a byproduct of how they've mapped it, or is intentional, so it doesn't have that annoying, you don't have to do that clutchy hand thing, which is good. The, the biggest noticeable uh, riding characteristic of that bike is that below six grand, it is like a gutless yeah. whelk. Yeah. There is nothing there. It's quiet. It's super smooth. Like you could poodle around town all day on that, have no problems at all. But then you'll be going through the rev range and then you'll hit six and a half K. Yeah, roughly around there. And it just, it opens up its pupa valves and just barks. The foo-foo valve. The foo-foo valve. Yeah. And it just goes, whoop, and absolutely takes off. Takes off. And, it, and it takes off with a ferocity yeah. that is very much smile-inducing. And I think, you know, the engine itself doesn't lend itself, and, the, you know, the gearing, the engine, the whole package, it doesn't lend itself to a decent road bike. But... You just don't care. It's exciting. No. But it's got it's, a split personality because if you has. do want to poodle around and go, I yeah. just want to get home and I want to return 50 MPG, you could probably do it on that, to be fair. You probably could. Just, yeah. And I noticed this weird thing. like it's got There's so much electronics going on inside that engine or so much stuff. It's a very clever bike. And yeah. there's something will never work out. Yeah. But it's, there's something, they're very, very intricate intricacies like in there. It's, it's, it feels like it's got some sort of next level live fuel mapping thing yeah. going on. It is crazy. And you can we'll, ride that at 11 miles an hour without touching any yeah. of the controls yeah. and it's smooth as you like. Yeah, yeah. Try riding anything else yeah. at that speed 
without touching. Apart from maybe the beamer, it, you're going to be like with hand cramp. With hand cramp. I mean, it's so nice that the VTEC's back. They should have they should have done something VTEC. They should have brought the VTEC back into motorcycling, shouldn't they? Yeah. Because yeah. it is. It literally. It's a. It's a. The purple power band is in there. You can put yeah. another power, another color if you like, but it feels like the purple power band's in there. It just goes, yeah. Which, yes, it's an exciting, historic type thing, but most road riders, then you're not going to on a on a sort of daily basis. You, you're not. You've got to have it singing up there. You have to, yeah, to yeah. get it anywhere near. Otherwise, you won't just get beaten by your mates. You'll get absolutely yeah. annihilated <laughs> because it is. Guffage below six, yeah. nothing there. It's like they've just gone, forget about it. Yeah. We just use that to get to that. But that's what I like about it. They've built a race bike to go racing with. I mean, yeah, this absolutely. is why the Kawasaki's not here. It's a rubbish road bike. Whereas Honda now have gone out, right, let's build a race bike. Let's go and build a race winning package. And that's exactly what they've done. It's, mm. And it is, I think, you know, regardless of the engine, the chassis for me is one of the most exciting things. The, the ability to load the front and wherever you are, but I will say, as you mentioned off camera, you have to know where you're going with the Honda. Yeah. It's not as fluid or as intuitive as most of the other bikes here. And just watching you do some of the passes yeah. and stuff, it, it's not twitchy as such, but it's very quick steering, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, to, and again, the, to mid, adjust you in your lines mid corner, you, it's a bit. And you have to be, you know, if you're in between like six and seven. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> so that upsets the chassis as well, but. You know, I think we're, other than, other than that, there's one other thing that really does my head in, and that's the keyless ignition. Oh, I thought you were going to say the ridiculous foot pegs. Well, but <laughs> I've got to say, they weren't as extreme as I remembered them in Qatar. Now, whether or not Honda have gone, all right, let's raise the seat a bit, guys, and lower the foot pegs a little bit, and we just, you know, after the complaints at the launch, I don't know. But the thing is, they're not Once you're on them... Yeah. You're okay, but you do need a sort yeah. of like a stair lift, a special helper. Yeah, to, to help a, a stanner to get leg lift, get you on it. So if you are a bit weak in the legs, forget it. But yes, the keyless ignition. Oh, what a pain! When you're wearing leathers, is without a pocket. Yeah, and you, why would you want a massive lump next to your heart or your ribs? That... I've got two massive lumps next to my. Well, yeah. yeah, so have I. But but why would you why would you want a big hard lump there? Because I could put my hard lump there. Could you? I could. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a stupid thing. Why do you need a keyless ignition on a bike? But what they've done, I can see why they've done it. You know, they've, what they've done is that RCV look. So there's an, and I love the look of the cockpit. You go, oh my God. You get on it, you get excited. You do get, and that top, that top clamp. That's what I'm saying. Top you, there's no, you know, what they've done with the air intake, you can literally fist it, as you've probably seen from my launch video. You can fist the fire blade. It would just move the ignition somewhere else, which is what they've done anyway. They put it on the yeah. side. So yeah. I don't know why you couldn't just put a key in there. I think they'll all be keyless within 10 years, sadly. I, it's, it's the most, I hate keyless and mm. I've never got, because the key had a perfect home in the fucking hole. <laughs> now everyone gets into their cars like, where'd you put the key? I'll put it in the cup holder. Well, where'd you put your cup? Uh, Next. Last but not least, the, the Yamaha uh, R1M. Rim. The rim. The rimmer. I mean, there's not a lot to dislike about this bike, is there? No, and I can't believe I'm saying this now because it, because it, is, it was and is really still such a technologically advanced yeah. motorcycle. It just feels a bit old and dated now. It does. It? It does. Well, she's aging a bit, even though the refinements for 2020 have made it a better bike, obviously. But they're very small. And it's, it does feel a little bit old now. I think it's safe to say the changes for 2020 will be better felt on track. I mean, you've got to really, really delve deep into your analytics to understand the, the benefits over the older bike. Certainly on the road at the moment, anyway. Yeah, the brakes still feel wooden. Really not enough bite there. You know, you expect a 25 grand or a 20 grand top of the range bike, you want decent brakes, don't you? You want Brembo's. Oh, I do love the urgency. It lacks excitement these days, but 
it's definitely got some urgency. You open the throttle and jumping off that blade, you can wave goodbye to the fire blade, definitely. But I mean, the chassis, there's not a lot to moan about. And I don't understand why this isn't a good super stop bike. I really don't understand. Oh! That thing sounds so good. And there's no doubt the R1, like the Fireblade, prefers a more open road, the slower stuff. Like the Fireblade, the uh, the long gearing it doesn't like. Yeah, there's probably some R1 owners going, oh, it feels lovely, it's right in town, yeah, it ain't too bad. It's it, it, sure to you it isn't mate, but ridden in isolation, it's fine. But I've got to say, it's actually smoother than the older bike, than the previous model. I'll give you that. Not having to work it as much. I mean, it is wristy though. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it has to be the angle of the bars and I don't know. I think I've never met anyone. I've never met anyone who doesn't think it's wristy. I mean, it must be a real issue for chronic masturbators, you know. And of course, it's really handy. It has a little iPhone-shaped slot for your sat-nav when you're lost in the middle of Portugal. Uh, rather handy, Andy. I, I used to have the previous R1M, a 2017, and I don't remember it being as smooth and as nice to ride on the road as this. And I have all the bikes. This is the narrowest because I know this because I managed to get it through my front door. It's had a host of engine upgrades, internals. You wouldn't really notice any difference. Obviously, the, the thing you're going to notice looking at it is the styling. It's had a facelift um, and it's now got the pressurized Olin's electronic suspension. But as for a bike for carving your favourite roads on a daily basis with the Japanese reliability and dependability of Yamaha and that noise it doesn't get that much better than this and I can just hop straight on it and feel good the Honda which is it's probably its closest rival it's a little bit more high maintenance, it's a little bit more twitchy, it's a little bit more... It's got some weird nuances, but it's quite expensive. It's beautifully smooth and the carbon fibre on this M version, I mean, you know, I, I know it's a bit of a fad, whatever carbon fibre, but it does look very, very special. It, it, feels, it feels like a traditional superbike with amazing tech on it and the electronics have always been really good on this bike but now it's just kind of oh nut boilers it's refining it oh and it's just oh yes it was so rewarding to ride fast and smooth he says chopping at the throttle like a rock riler on speed okay so positives it's a fantastic sunday bike so if you want to come out to some beautiful roads like this, have a good carve-up sesh, then it's, a, it's extremely capable, nice, friendly to ride, definitely got some excitement and that some torque, beautiful flowing, traditional type motorcycle. I know it's got all the electronics, but it does feel, compared to the others, not dated, I don't want to say dated, it just feels the most recognisable. Uh, negatives, it certainly ain't a town bike, it's going to do your head in. And that's mainly, it's not the ride particularly, even though that is fairly firm, but adjustable with the adaptive Erlins. Uh, it's the, it's just the gearing, the clutch, pulling away. You kind of, I've always got the feeling that I'm burning the clutch out or going to stall it. It's just not an easy, nagery bike to live with. Also, this bike comes with the data logger, which I don't believe any of the other bikes do. And the sound is one of, if not the best, noises on test. And this is the stock exhaust. If Batman had a bike, he does. It jumps over stuff. I've got to find a cafe somewhere around here. 
I don't really want to stop. This is so nice, just linking turns together and just flowing. The other bikes feel different, like fresh. Yes, definitely. Like there's something else going on. Yeah, they've got an element of either excitement or something fresh, whereas the Yamaha, it's just... It's just very, very good. It's very, very good in all areas, except the brakes. The brakes are, mm. I'm sorry, but you're paying, what, 20, how much? 22, 22 and a half now, I think. For a top spec bike that is dripping with carbon, and yet you put budget brakes on. And I'm sorry, but... But you get a number plaque on it. <sighs> It's scant, scant redemption, mate. Scant redemption. So when you run out breaking yourself, you can go, ah, oh, 155. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, but it's not even the power of the brake. It's the feeling that it gives you. We, we've, got, we've said this many times. It's been the same, yeah, the whole thing. They it's have, still the same. They did for this year, I was at the launch in Hareth. They have done a two-stage track ABS. So it might help us tomorrow yes, yeah, yeah. on the yeah. circuit. But it's still, it's just not... It's the feeling. That's what's it's exactly. Missing. It's and not... the confidence it gives yeah. you. You know, you said you were following me, and I, I, I almost went on the back of you yeah. so many times because you'd be constantly yeah. dabbing Fingering the brake. the brake. Yeah. And it's just it's a which hog... heats it up even more. Yeah. Which is not what. Was, yeah. was bad. But you know, when you know you don't know the roads so well, you're constantly going, "Oh, mate, I don't want to go in too fast here," so you're dabbing the brakes, and there's nothing there. No. If there's nothing there to give you confidence, then. No. So that so that is the overall big negative with yeah. it. However, there's no doubt it's a sublime engine. Yeah. That the oh, yes. noise it makes, the smooth, the it's low down quiet. torque. It's very quiet. It is quiet from outside, but when you're on it, it's got that lovely induction noise. Induction noise, yes, but it's still too quiet. Okay. You know, we're, we're spoiled. It has got, it has got we're spoiled here. We've got the say, it's got four catalytic converters in now. Okay. So but, it's the most suffocated bike. So okay. let's, let's give it a break. Okay, all right. Sorry. Sorry. But. It's, it's so smooth, it's actually really easy to ride, yep. fast. If you're gonna go canyon carving at the weekend, you don't wanna do any of the other crap that you do with your bikes, like go to work or go, go uh, commuting or touring, whatever. You can't go wrong with that bike because it is a really easy to use package. The electronics are fantastic. It just feels a little bit old It does. Now. I mean, it's essentially a two bike for what, 2016? 2015. Yeah, 2015, yeah. yeah. No, and it, it, yes, they've updated it, like the Aprilia, but the, the the updates aren't as effective as the Aprilia, I don't think, so. No, no. But it's it's still a really enjoyable bike to ride, and, you know, and if you're a Yamaha man, yeah, I, you're I, still going to buy it anyway. I will say, though, the I don't know what it is with the ergonomics, but they make my wrist go wristy. I've, I still get it. I didn't notice that particularly. Okay. Uh, but, it, you know, that full carbon fairing looks fantastic. It looks bling, and... You know, you ain't going to go wrong down your local bike meet with it. Carbona. I mean, I think we both agree there's one clear winner. Yes. And that is the BMW. By quite a margin. Quite actually. a margin. It was, it was the last bike we got out of the van. Yeah. And I'm quite glad we did that. Yeah, because yeah. Because otherwise, if we got it out first, everything we'd just be comparing to that directly yeah. and go, yeah, yeah. it's not yeah, as good. Yeah, yeah. Whereas we kind of were like, oh, God, it's actually really close. Yeah. Until that came out. I say, smashed it. The, the other four are so close. Yeah. They're, I mean, you could almost, you know, they're all amazing bikes. They yeah. all, you know, they, they stop, some of them stop. Most of them stop really well. They turn well. The engines are good. They sound good, et cetera, et cetera. But the BMW is a big, big step above. Yeah. In every, in every sense of the road sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the other bikes... It's lit. It's down to the flavour thing. Exactly. Isn't it? They're, yeah, all, yeah, they're all yeah. ice lollies. That was what I was trying to say. Yeah. Right. Okay. They're all ice lollies. Yeah. Do you like the, the strawberry one or the yeah. raspberry one, or whatever? But the BMW is a fucking Cornetto. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, I say it's a Magnum like double double caramel. It's a Magnum double, oh, double I find caramel. Those too sweet. Or a Ben and Jerry's. Um, oh no, anything Ben and salty Jerry's. Salty caramel. Do oh. they even do that? I don't know. But salty caramel. That's, no. Yeah. It's basically it's deluxe. Yeah. 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 It's, it's it's the next level. It's Tesco's yeah. finest. Yeah. On the Queen's highways, there are no points for lap records or sector speeds. It's all about personal preference. What you want from a 200 bhp superbike on the road. You're all big and clever enough to make a buying decision based on these informed opinions. And, even if we had constructed a complicated point system, the outcome would still be subjective. But there is one thing that's 100% concrete, and that's the fact that the BMW S1000RR is 
king of the road. It comes with a three-year warranty. The only bike to do so? The only bike to do so on the test. The after sales in BMW is amazing. Yeah. So it's got a load of other really uh, intelligent reasons to buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But are you buying it with your heart? But that's not necessarily the bike that we'd buy because objectively speaking, yes, it is the best bike. Yeah. But it's a tough choice between, for me, the BMW is exceptional, yes, and it's the cheapest. I love the Honda. I love it because it doesn't feel like a Honda. It feels crazy and edgy and racy and everything I want in a motor. But then again, the Ducati, as I said previously, is the biggest surprise for me. And that's something that I just, I love getting on it. I go, oh yes, I'm getting on the Ducati. Yeah. And I don't get that with probably all the rest of the bikes. Yeah. I think, I think the Ducati for me is definitely second place in terms of yeah. the best bike to yeah, ride yeah, on yeah, the road. Yeah. Uh, all which the is factors, crazy. Which, which is, is mental. <laughs> which is a crazy thing to say, yeah. So I think, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm quite logical, I try to be. So it will be between the passionate Ducati and the Germanic BMW. And to be honest with you, what would I buy? It's six and a half grand more. And you've still got to spend some money on it for me. Because you still have to buy the Ducati special bits and all the nice the things. The five grand exhaust. Um, but it's for a road bike. <laughs> With my own money, I would buy the BMW. Give us a rundown then, in order of best bikes. Best bikes, not, okay. Not subjective. Uh, okay, the, the best bikes. BMW, Ducati, Aprilia, Honda, Yamaha. Interesting. So I would go BMW, Ducati, that's clear. And then the rest are so close. Yeah, yeah. I would probably, I would probably go. I can't believe I'm going to put it in this order. No, it can't be right. God, it's painful. It is painful, but I don't like making decisions. I can't even order a pizza. So it breaks down like this: the BMW is way down the road, with the Ducati pretty close behind it. Then we've got a substantial gap, which was so close to call, but in the end, we went for Aprilia, Honda, and then just Yamaha. Coming next, it's the track.